Here's kind of an interesting circuit here that deals with these current measurements in Ohm's law that we've been doing here. I have an LED here which just looks just like a normal LED, has the flat edge and everything, but it's advertised as being a flasher LED, so-called flashing LED. So once again, I'll put it in a circuit with a 100 ohm resistor for protection here. And if I go ahead and do that, let's just see what happens. We see that the LED indeed flashes. So these are kind of fun things because they can use to, to drive an entire circuit. In other words, turn, switching the current on and off, on and off, uh, a couple of times a second the way you see there. So I just thought it would be interesting as far as Ohm's laws goes, or these current measurements we'd be doing, to go and just measure the current in a uh, flashing circuit like this, where the, you know, the sort of the dynamics here just isn't stable at all. It's sort of going on, off, on, off. So let's see what happens here. So I'll go ahead and grab that, that current that's coming out of the resistor right here. I have the meter already switched into the 20 milliamp scale like that. And I'll grab onto this other piece of wire here. This is my break point here. And so you see that as the LED flashes, the current is sort of all over the place because, you know, in accordance to Ohm's law here, when the LED is off, the current, the circuit is not drawing any current at all. And you can kind of think of an off circuit as having infinite resistance if you want. So if you have an infinity in the bottom here, the current will be zero. And the meter tries to measure that here, but it's sort of confused because just as soon as it determines that the current is zero, the LED turns on again, so we have some more finite resistance going on, some finite current flow in there. So see, the current is definitely just sort of all over the place. It's low, then it's high, and it's low, then it's high. But it is indicative of current that's surging on and off like that. So we see that, you know, just another example of Ohm's law in there. And by the way, this idea of the infinite resistance and so on is exactly what a switch does. If I just move that off to the side, we had another example here earlier where we are talking about what a switch does, something like this here, where we were drawing a switch that looked like this. We have a schematic like that, and we sort of agree that if you're sending current in like this here, it can't flow through a circuit unless this part is pushed down. So the switch is in the off position here, and when it switched down, it could be in the on position. So you can also analyze the switch in terms of Ohm's law as well. In particular, this gap here is literally an air gap. And this sort of means that you know no electrical current could possibly get off of this wire onto this one to continue the circuit here, unless the voltage was high enough. But it's we're, that's just another conversation here. So this effectively has an R of infinity right here, an open switch like this. You could sort of say that the resistance here is sort of infinite for this, isn't it? Because there's no electric current can flow. And Ohm's law here, if you put an infinity in the bottom, anything over infinity is going to be zero. A very large number in the bottom. In fact, the largest number we can possibly get to is in the bottom. So I will effectively be zero right here. And that's exactly what it means for a switch to be off, doesn't it? In this, when the switch is in the closed position here, let's maybe put a few terminals in here. This is what the switch would look like when it's closed, when this piece of metal is pushed down here. If this is just straight wire here, then this R here, let's just say, is going to be very small, something like that. And I don't know how small, I'm not going to be able to do a current measurement for it here, but I here will definitely come out to be some number here. You'll get some number for that because R is now some small number, granted, but it is some number num nonetheless. It's not infinity. So as soon as you get off of the infinity, you start to come down to be some small number, you'll get a good amount of current flow, and that's exactly what a switch does when it's in the closed position. So that's indeed one way of thinking about this LED flashing circuit here. You can think of this LED as a little switch. It's presenting infinite resistance to the circuit when it's off, so no current can flow, and very little resistance to the circuit when it's on, so current can flow. And what I mean by acting like a switch is you can, in fact, let's just take the meter out of the circuit just for a minute here, and it can actually drive things. Let's put a another LED sort of in line with it there. So I've got the two LEDs connected right there on this row here. Might be a bit hard to see on the camera, but these I have this the output of the first LED feeding the input of a second LED, and the flat edge, the edges of both of these are towards the right. And now if I connect them, see they sort of both flash. So I have a red and a blue there, both flashing on there. And it's kind of nice. And just to wrap the video up here, we haven't used this buzzer at all yet here. Let's see if we can get it to do something. Just uh, to, to use some things in our box right there, as long as we're sort of getting wrapping up Ohm's Law here. But if I connect it like that, that looks like my buzzer is not working. So, well, it's a 12 volt buzzer, so it's probably not going to come on at all. Anyway, but that's a little wrap up of Ohm's Law here. And if you happen to buy one of these flasher LEDs, they're kind of fun to play around with and analyze in terms of Ohm's Law.